Morning, gents. Howdy. Hello, Steve. Hey, what's new? New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire. <laughs> Bet you thought I was going to say New Haven. Oh, Booston Martin Sloan, eh? Well, cast your optics on this. Some class, eh? Oh, Harry. Hi, Spence. How do, Miss Beeson? Hi, Spence. Hi, Steve. Well, well, Mr. Spencer Brown, the smartest man in this here town. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Say, Spence, tell him who's going to be the next mayor. No, you tell him, Steve. You've been doing it longer than this. <laughs> that ain't so bad, is it? <laughs> you going over to the shop? Yeah. I'll give you a ride over on Black Bess if you want it. Oh, fine. Well, you can come in for just a second, can't you, Spence? I don't know, Harry. I've got a lot of important things to attend to. Well, it'll be more important than our invention. No, that's right. I'm sort of stuck. Well, all right. I don't know, Harry, but... you take a fool's advice. I think I'd sort of cut down on this governor, you know? Yeah? Makes it all kind of soft and everything. Gee, Spence, you're a whiz. Ah, go on, you are. <laughs> I bet I'm late. Yes, sir. Well, I gotta be going. So long, Harry. Now, so long. Oh, Spence. Yeah? Hey, Spence. What about tonight? You coming over? I don't know. You know, I kind of promised Mrs. Bailey I'd stop in and look at her chicken coops. Chicken coops? Yeah. She's been having some trouble. I don't know. Those hands and the roosters, they don't seem to be getting along. So, I don't know. Hey, Spencer, the about time you stopped worrying the people and began to look out for number one. You know, there's something to that, Harry. Only this morning, I was looking in the looking glass, and I said to myself, I said, see here, Spencer Brown, you just take a fool's advice and look out for yourself instead of other people. And believe me, from now on, you fix my car? Huh? You fix my car? Well, I'm going to start now, any day, looking out for my dog. Oh, don't laugh. I'll do it. About a half an hour, Philip. Yes, Mr. Diamond. Oh, Mr. Diamond, is there anything for the Calipatoni news? Well, no, nothing, except that you can say, I'm sure I will win the election. Mr. Diamond. Mr. Diamond. Mr. Diamond. What of it? Is uh, Mrs. Prescott in? Why, uh, Here's Mrs. Prescott. Oh, oh good morning, Mr. Diamond. <laughs> Hasn't it been a lovely day? <laughs> well, it's still young. Yes, lovely but young. Like the mornings in sunny France when the sun is shining. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Prescott, I have a proposition that I think may interest you. A proposition? A business. Oh, how pretty. <laughs> Come right upstairs yes, to my right. private Thank cello. You, right. <laughs> oh, huh? it's perfectly proper, oh. I assure you. <laughs> Some bus. Oh, I'll say. Is How'd you like the owner? I don't know. I'm pretty satisfied with old black fence right here. This is pretty <laughs> Boy, that is a bus. Hey, 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 hands off now. I just want to see if it works, Mr. They must be all the six cylinders in this car, huh? Please get off your poultry. The po oh, <laughs> excuse me, I didn't know that. Sorry, I guess it kind of spots up easy. All of good things still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gee, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. Say, I told you hands off once. I fooled you that time. I didn't have my hands on. <laughs> if I had my hands on, I'd have done that. Say, do you realize that this car costs $16,000? 16000 It's worth every penny of it, mister. Ah, ah, 
Sheriff. Don't put your hands on it. Don't put your hands on it. Wouldn't let me put my hands on that, would you? Well, I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. Fine, how do you do? Man can't leave his bicycle on a public thoroughfare. Do you know that that costs $16? You and your $16,000. <laughs> I've got a case against you if I want to take it up. Good morning, Miss Baker. Good morning, Mr. Brown. You're late again. Guilty. Overslept? Kinda. And dressed in a hurry. Huh? <laughs> Thanks. Egbert's blood pressure must be high this morning. You'd better go. Go. <laughs> I'll be seen. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Perhaps I should say good afternoon. It's all right, Egg, but you can go. I'll watch the desk. Never mind. You're a quarter of an hour late if you don't mind my telling you. Oh, I don't mind you telling me. I'd advise you to stop talking to Miss Baker and pay a little more attention to your work. All right, Egbert. I'll do that. If you do a favor for me. Well, what is it? Fix your wig. It's crooked. Oh, really? I... Well, what can I do for his honor, the mayor? Good morning, dear. My, my, my. You know, I was telling the boys last night that my niece grows prettier every day. <laughs> You're not finding the work here too hard? Of course not, Uncle Martin. Now, any time you want to quit. No, sir. You've supported me long enough. Don't fret about me. Just worry about Mr. Diamond. Oh. <laughs> he's in the hotel now. Well? Well, I don't like him. Oh, he's just the modern businessman that eats bran and talks mush. Yes. But he says mean things about you. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh. What this mayor needs is a good five-cent cigar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> enjoyed every moment of this, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I might as well get used to calling you that. <laughs> and I've been carried away by your continual flow of wit. Ah, <laughs> uh, dealing with a person of your intelligence, Mrs. Prescott, is indeed a pleasure. Oh, Mr. Diamond, you are so understanding and comprenant. <laughs> Down, boy. Tell me, Mr. Diamond, when you take over the hotel after the election, what are you going to do with it? Well, of course, I shall make a few changes. In fact, I think the whole town needs modernizing. I'll do what I can. Such ambition. Boundless. <laughs> 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 well, I, uh, I trust you'll keep the matter quiet till after election. I never tell anyone anything. <laughs> Good day. Good day. And you, you keep your mouth shut, young man. Yes, ma'am. Well, I guess we're going to part company. Just in time. 
time. Hold your finger there. the only job I ever had, Miss Becker. You know, I was just thinking this morning that if I ever lost it, wondering what I'd do. Why, they couldn't do without you. Everyone likes you. Everyone? Why, yes. <laughs> what in the world do you want with all that string? I don't know. It's just kind of a hobby, Miss Becker, with me. I, well, a fellow's got to have some outlet, you know? <laughs> But I come by it natural. All my family were string savers. String savers? Mm -hmm. They've been saving string in my family way, way back. The best string saver in the family, I guess without a doubt, is my Aunt Agatha. Now, there is an old gal that has got herself some string. But Andy, I don't know, she's kind of sneaky about the way she gets her string. You know, it's a funny thing. She waits until the holidays come around. And when they bring in the Christmas packages and things, she walks, sneaks the string right off the packages. Naturally, she gets the very best string. Well, I imagine so. <laughs> now I got a brother, Ed, too. He's also a string saver. But Ed is more for the quantity, I guess you'd say. Ed doesn't care what kind of string it is, just so long as it's string. Ed snaps it up, and there is a boy that will never want for string as long as he lives. But Ed's had us all kind of worried here lately because he sort of switched off the string and now he's saving rope. Rope? I'll tell you why that worries us. It seems that a way, way back in our family, I think it was my great, great, great grandpappy, he, um, he died on account of a rope and naturally, those things kind of upset all the family. <laughs> and then there was a branch of the Browns way up in Nova Scotia. They were all paper bag put her awayers up there. Vince <laughs> Brown, do you actually expect me to believe that? Oh, it's true, Miss Baker. And then, then there was a branch of the family in Ypsilanti. Spencer? The... Is this the elevator? No, ma'am, I was just... The saying... elevator? Don't you fall? Yes, sir. Want a drink now? No, no. That's for three naughty boys who arrived today from the east. They'll probably be thirsty. Naughty boys? Yes, three boys who understand politics, know how to handle the crowds at the polls. You don't mean gunmen. Gunmen? <laughs> Steve, I'm afraid you've been going to the movies. <laughs> Gosh, for a minute there, I thought... You're not supposed to think. Well, Miss Baker, <clears throat> are you just as difficult to talk to as ever, or are you in a good mood? Why? 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 Because I'd like to ask you to join me at luncheon. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I, I, I promised to go with Spence. Hmm. Where are we going? Shh, to lunch. You didn't need any potatoes. You didn't need anything. Weren't you hungry? I don't know. It's kind of hard to swallow. Sore throat? Hmm? Sore throat? I don't know. I know. I bet you're in love. I bet I am, too. Who is she? <laughs> Spence Brown, that's up. You want some pie? Now, don't change the subject. Who is she? Can you hear music? Yes. Let's see what it is. All right. Oh, ho! 
Here comes a parade. Here it is. Here's a parade. Oh, look at old man Peabody lay that bed. Isn't he wonderful? Must have spent a lot of money on this parade. Oh, hello. Hey, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hey. You can't hear me, Dad. <laughs> look, look at him. What's the matter, Norma? Stance, who do you want to see win this election? Well, I don't know. I guess I'm expected to vote for Diamond. Diamond? Well, who do you want to win? Martin Sloan. You know, he's my uncle. That's right, so he is. He's been awfully good to me. A lot of ways he couldn't afford. It would break his heart to lose. Oh, he's just got to be reelected. And Spence, you've got to help him win. What could I do? Do? Why, everybody in this town knows you, and everyone likes you. Everyone? Of course. And they'll all listen to you. Well, if they listen to me, I'll keep on talking to them for Sloan. I knew you would. <laughs> I think you're right, Spence. Mayor Sloan should be reelected. Thanks. I'm glad to hear you say that. By the way, Spence, what's playing down the by Joe? Mmm, nothing much. No, no Mexican picture. Oh, no. <laughs> have you been to the Princess? No. Oh, have they got a picture? <laughs> All about love. <sighs> Thank you, Spence. Well, are we going up? Huh? Huh? Oh, oh, <laughs> Mr. Wimple, oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Haven't seen you in a long time. Still running the elevator, I think. Better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> longer I'm gonna run it though I don't know. Well, where have you been? I haven't seen you in a long time, Wimple. Well, oh, I'm stopping here at the hotel now. Uh, my wife's out of town. Oh. When the cat's away. I catch it. I catch on. <laughs> <laughs> You're voting for Sloan, of course. No. No. He's too old. Now yeah. wait a minute here, Wimple. Suppose Suppose you were running for mayor. And I, I, know, went, I, uh, I know, but just suppose you were running for mayor and I walked all over town saying Wimple's too old. And suppose I went around saying that Wimple is living at the Prescott Hotel while his wife's away. And the cat playing. And the mice playing. Hey. Here we be, why? Prescott House. So this is the joint that Diamond sent us to. Fifty cents. I didn't think they made bugs as small as this town. It even smells funny. That's fresh air, you lug. Hey, you. Dragging them bangs. Come on. <laughs> Young man? Uh, yes, sir. Two rooms and bath. I'm awfully sorry, sir, but I've just given my last two rooms and bath to these uh, gentlemen right here. You don't want a bath, do you? No. You probably need it more than we do. What's that? Uh, uh, he means that we had a bath last week in Cleveland. See. Now listen. Take my advice and vote for Sloan. Now will you or won't you? Listen, Spence. I'll vote for him early and often. If you'll only let me out of here. Oh, now you're talking wimple. Say, mister, that won't bring the elevator down no faster. Who asked you anything? Nobody. I'm just telling you. 
You're telling me what? That the bell don't ring. <laughs> <laughs> Go on out. Say, William, just got another vote for Sloan. That's nine votes the day that Mr. Diamond's lost. <laughs> yeah? Well, I'm for Diamond, see? Oh, we'll have to talk that over, stranger. Sloan's a man for mayor, there's no doubt about it. Now, let me tell you something. Say, who is it? Nobody. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'll come in, Spence. I can only stay a few minutes. Say, you won't want to leave when you hear this. Yeah? Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of Mayor Sloan. Mayor Sloan. Mayor Sloan. Vote for Uncle Martin Sloan. The best mayor we ever had. Who's that? We finally got it. That's me talking. Don't you understand? It finally works. Well, I'm a singer. It finally... <laughs> After all the time we spent, it finally... <laughs> oh, I'm a son of a gun. We're practically rich. That's the cheapest and best sound recorder and reproducer ever invented. <laughs> oh, boy. To think, we, we knew it would kind of work, but never to get it like that. <laughs> I'm a son of a gun. <laughs> Boy, will I have good news to tell my girl tonight. You can? Yeah. You got a girl? Sure. Well, at least I think she's my girl. I didn't tell you about it because I figured you'd begin kidding me. No, I would never kid you. Why should I? I got a girl myself. Well, you got a girl. What's funny about that? Can I have a girl? Even if she don't know it yet? <laughs> well, who is she anyway? Mm, I don't know whether I better say anything about it until I'm sure she is my girl. Well, when my girl says yes, I'll tell the whole world. So will I. <laughs> hey, but how do you get them to say yes? Mm, there's a lot of ways. Yeah, every time I try, my throat dries up and my blood runs the wrong way. <laughs> They spent you know everything. No, no, not everything. No. Well, you've read a lot of books. What's the best way, you know, to tell them? No. For instance, <laughs> you say, when I see your shining eye and your beautiful nose and your ruby lips. When I look into your beautiful eyes and shiny nose. No, no, that's not it at all. I tell it. I got an idea. Tell it what I'm doing. I'll, I'll say it in here, see? And then you can kind of memorize it a little at a time. Huh? I say that's a great idea. There's a fresh record there. Uh, smiling at me. I just can't tell you how much I love you. All I know is I'm crazy about you. And I'd be satisfied all my life just to sit at a table opposite you, listening to the band, looking out the window, watching the parade go by. What? <laughs> No, 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 that's, that's wrong. <laughs> well, Spence, you keep right on. I'm late for my date now. All right. Uh, you go ahead, Harry. I, I gotta start this thing all over and find out what I said. Say, it sounded great. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. My job. When I look in your shiny eyes, your ruby lips, Watch them smiling at me. I just can't tell you how much I love you. All I know is I'm um, face, 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 
She told me you would. She? No. <laughs> Did she? Mm-hmm. Honey, I was just thinking about Norma. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, how about that speech? Well, I... I'd hate to disappoint anybody. Especially Norma and, and you, Mr. Sloan. That's the spirit. Thank you, my boy. It, uh... Well, uh, Do you want me to make a... Not a long speech? Anything you feel like it. <laughs> Good night, my boy. Good night. Oh, can I go out with you, Your sure, Honor? Sure, come along, sir. Hello, Norma. Hello, Harry. I'm awful sorry I was late. Oh, that's all right. Isn't it a beautiful night? Norma, I can't tell you how much I... Yes? Yes, it is a beautiful night. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sloan. Mm. I guess about everybody in town will be at the rally, won't they? Just about. <laughs> M uh, Mr. Mrs. Sloan. Yeah. Do you suppose that uh, Miss Norma will be there? Well, I imagine so. Good night, Spence. Good night, Mr. Sloan. I come to you tonight. I come to you tonight to tell you how that I think. Hello, Norma. Hello, Harry. I'm looking for Spence. Do you know where he is? He's around somewhere, practicing. He asked me to bring over our invention. He wants to make a record of the speech he's making tonight for his children. Why? Harry. Well, that was his idea, not mine. Will you see that he gets it? I'll be glad to. Fellow Calipatonians, I come to you this evening to tell you of the um, economic conditions, economic, economic, economic conditions that we are Gosh, but you're in fight for sore eyes. So you slip me a package of those good old cotton nails, will you? Got the new shoes, do you? A couple of bottles of varnish. Get me? Or do I stutter? You know, I do all that secret work for Mr. Diamond. I see. Well, here's where I'll probably win myself a silk kimono. Ah, a gambling festival. Now, if I were you, I'd take this one right on the end. This one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you lost. I think I would select that one right there in the corner. That we are forced to meet in our little town. And... This may be kidding to you fellas, but this board this week has cost me a cool dollar and a half. Spendthrift. There's a boy that's headed straight for the gutter. <laughs> you know, I was saying... Hello, Norma. Oh, Harry Bales left a package for you. Did he? 
Thanks. Say, Norma, are you, uh, are you going to the rally tonight? I'd like to see anything keep me away. <laughs> Gosh, I forgot. I kind of hate not to hear him speak. Although that isn't half as important as this is. Say, you know something? What? Spencer's got a girl. Yes. He kind of said something about it yesterday, but... Uh, he did? Who is she? I don't know. He wouldn't tell me. He wouldn't tell me either. But, uh... <laughs> we made a promise. What about? Well, we promised to tell each other who our girls were. As soon as they said they were our girls. Then... Then he doesn't know about us? No. Well... well that is... I guess you can tell him if you wish, Harry. Good evening, Obadiah. Good evening, Mayor Sloan. I think you would better start the meeting. It's 8 o'clock. I don't want to keep the folks up too late. Yes, Your Honor. Hi, Spence. Hello, Spence. gentlemen, as chairman of this committee, I stand before you. Why didn't you let us crack up that rally tonight? Yeah? What'd that get us? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Diamond. Hi, fellas. Hi. Oh, pipe down. Say, before we have a drink, us boys got to be careful who we tie up with. Whose dough are we spending? Now, don't you worry. It's the railroads. <laughs> well, you mean, Mr. Diamond, you're, uh, you're working a racket for the railroad? Yes. The railroad will pay handsomely for the right-of-way through the middle of the town. And when I'm elected mayor, they'll get it. <laughs> and you'll get yours. Yeah. yeah. And we'll get ours. <laughs> well, that's something like it. Steve, give the boys a little drink. Yes, sir. The main tracks will run right through the Prescott Hotel. That's uh, why I'm buying it. That's that lovely morgue we're living in. No cabaret, no nothing. <laughs> Well, hurry up, Steve. Jim and Ethel, Mr. Diamond. I must have got the wrong package, but I'll be right back. Well, now, ain't that the berries? And me with me kiss are all set for a joke. Yeah, and me too. I know you don't care much about hearing me talk. You've heard me talk for the past 20 years. But there is an important personage in this town. Someone who is known and loved by everyone. One who was always willing to help any cause, whether it is needy or otherwise. And when I needed help, this person was the first one to step forward and offer their services. And now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the most prominent Calipatonian of all, Spencer Brown. Dear friends, 
I come before you this evening to talk about something. I don't know why I'm here, except I'm glad to be here and how we all love Mayor Sloan. We go through life when we stop to realize that the, we do have, without a doubt, we realize at times, things that come before us, the things economic conditions are the things that hold us closely. You take the baby bee. You take it. Here we go. <laughs> then again, there is another side. You take also the way things are done. The way things are done unostentatiously. And I want to say to you, my fellow, my fellow constituents, as we are gathered here tonight under the stars, here we are. You take this great and glorious country, this, this country, this here country, America! Come on, Muggs. Diamond wants us to pick up that elevator guy and take him up to his place for a little, uh, talk. Machine, Harry. You know, Steve brought it right back. Soon as he found out, he'd made a mistake. He did? Uh -huh. Was it all right? Certainly. Would you try it out? No. It's right in the locker room. Come on in. Say, it looks all right. Tell it. Now, wait a minute. That record's been played. Was it a fresh one? Yeah. Let's see. So you mean, Mr. Diamond, you're, uh, you're working a racket for the railroad? Yes. The railroad will pay handsomely for the right of way through the middle of the town. See, that's Diamond talking. And when Sorry. I'm elected mayor, Jumpin Catfish. <laughs> if people knew that, he wouldn't get a single vote. Yeah. Sloan's yeah. our we'll next mayor. <laughs> see, what are you going to do with it? Oh, I'm going to take it right over to Mr. Diamond's house, and you're going to the KPR. Well, be careful of that record. It's the only one we have. Is it? That's right. I'll tell you what you do. I'll do the talking of this, Mark, see? And I'll do the socking. Me, too. Say, if there's any socking to do, I'll do that, too. The wrong guy. Say, where's that other mug that runs this elevator? He's downstairs. Go on down. I tell you what you do, Harry. You go right to the radio station, and I'm leaving as soon as I can change my clothes. Gee, things sure are popping, ain't they? I'll say they are. Well, <laughs> good luck with diamonds, friends. Thanks, Harry. Thanks. So long, Harry. Hello, fellas. <laughs> we want to go upstairs. But you just came down. So what? We're going up again, see? Oh, why? Look, look, I can't because, see, I'm off duty. Never mind. But William will take you up. We don't want William. I uh, know, but get in there. We'd rather have you take us up. Hey, boys? Yeah. Sure. Oh, I see. You fellas feel safer with me. Well, up we go. So you made a speech last night. Yes. Did you like it? No, I didn't. And from now on, you ain't gonna do no more talking. Oh, oh old fella's gotta talk. <laughs> Hello, 
Bring him in the room, boys. Huh? Oh, I can't. You see, I gotta watch the elevator. I wouldn't be allowed to go in. I'm... Hey, now, wait a minute, now. Now, wait a minute, fellas. Take it deluded. Remember that your host desires you to be as happy as he. I thank you. A gentleman by the name of Brown to see you, sir. Brown? Yes, sir. But I, I can't leave my guests. I believe it, it's something to do about the election, sir. I am sorry, friends. But you'll have to excuse me for a few moments. Anything, Mr. Diamond. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Diamond. Well? What the devil do you want? Mr. Diamond, I've been thinking. Oh, yes? And I thought maybe I could start you to thinking. You did. You know, I thought that, well, you've, you've got so much money. What do you want to be mayor of a little town like this? You could be mayor of a great big town. Now, old Mr. Sloan, this is the only job he's ever had. And if he lost it, it might kill him. Honest. And you drag me away from my guests to tell me this. Well, I, I didn't know you had company, Mr. Diamond, but... Now that I did drag you, would you, uh, would you take a fool's advice? What are you getting at? Mr. Diamond, I want to tell you something. Do you think you could tell me anything? Yes. Don't run for mayor. Is Mr. Diamond in? Yes, sir, but he said... All right. This is the most asinine impertinence I've ever encountered. And from a yokel, a small town bumpkin, a nitwit, you forced your way into my house, interrupted a dinner to interfere with a proposition that you know absolutely nothing about, with a preposterous demand Young man, you're crazy. Crazy? Crazy. Crazy. Mr. Diamond, that reminds me. I've got a new invention I want to show oh. you. Oh. Now, I'm going to have you thrown out of here. Oh, please, not yet, Mr. Diamond. I've gone to a lot of trouble to get this. I really want you to hear it. Uh, you mean, Mr. Diamond, you're, uh, you're working a racket for the railroad? Yes. The railroad will pay handsomely for the right of way through the middle of the town. And when I'm elected mayor, they'll get it. <laughs> and you'll get Turn it off. Yeah. There's a lot more. There's a lot to do. No. Well, that's something like it. Pretty clever. You realize I could smash that? And I could smash you, too. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you, Mr. Diamond. 
No? No. Besides, there's only one of me, and there's six of those. Sure, wait. Mr. Diamond, will yeah. you please, please tell him? Yes, yes, it, it's true, it's true. Yes, Diamond, Diamond. <laughs> and Harry, huh? Oh, no. Didn't have a bit of trouble. No? All right. See you later. Slow. <laughs> you know, that's Harry, the fellow that invented that. Well, you had something to do with it. Oh, here and there. <laughs> Pretty slick, isn't it? The reproduction's perfect. Yes, it is. <laughs> What are you gonna do with it? First of all, we gotta get someone to invest some money in it. You, uh, you do a lot of investing, don't you, Mr. Diamond? Well, don't you think I've put enough in that already? Well, here's a chance to get some of it back. Now, wait a minute. You know, I know a little something about electricity. You do? Yeah. Now, don't you think that amateur is a little too short? The amateur's short? Yes. Huh? If you have it any longer, you run into money. Couldn't do that. Who's that egg inside taking all of Diamond's time? His name is, uh, I can't recall it for the moment, sir. Uh, he's the elevator man at the hotel. The loudspeaker. Oh, yeah? Would a third interest cost me? Well, I couldn't tell you that, Mr. Diamond. I'd have to ask Harry. Well, you can sell me an option on a third interest. I could do that. Good. I'll give you a check. Check. <laughs> Rather have cash, eh? Thanks. There. Is that enough to show my good intention? Oh, this is great. <laughs> You'll get this back and a lot more, too. You know, it comes in mighty handy, too, because Harry's gonna get married. <laughs> well, I, I guess I've kept you away from your folks long enough. So I'll be going. <laughs> good night, Mr. Diamond. Good night. Good Thanks night. very much. Thank you for everything. Oh, aren't you afraid to go out with all that money? I say, there's an idea. Have all that money even in color for Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Yeah. No, no, not you. These gentlemen. Mr. Brown's going home. Yes, I'm... <laughs> I'm going home, boys. <laughs> I want you to go with him. Yeah. Oh, I I can go home alone, Mr. Diamond. No, 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 no. I I couldn't think of it. I want the boys to uh, take care of you. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. Well, I guess you're going to take care of me. <laughs> oh, we're going home. Well, here we go. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Diamond. Good night. Good night. Oh, Kelly. Come here. I mean it. I want you to take care of him. Okay, boss. <laughs> nice and quiet. No noise, I know. Hey, Kelly. I want you to see that Mr. Brown is delivered safely to his hotel. And I'll hold you responsible. Chief, boys. Not even one little one. Yeah, uh... Kelly, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> How perfectly ducky. Come on. This is the latest. I've been out in a long time. I haven't been out. And then we, we saw the palace of the dogs and rode all day in one of those pergolas. <laughs> and then we went to Nice. You see, it was really our second honeymoon and Horace simply swept me off my feet. A viva la diamond. 
Friends, I am sorry to have detained you. But it was a matter of great importance. Viva la diamond! I have an announcement to make that I am sure will surprise you. Briefly, I am withdrawing from the election. <laughs> He's joking. No, no. I mean it. In fact, it is the only thing I can do. So I'll ask you all to join me in a toast to our next mayor, Martin Sloan. <gasps> Mon -do. You know, this is a marvelous night, fellas. I don't... Oh, excuse me, mister. <laughs> I don't mean to do that. I'm so quick. <laughs> you know, I haven't been up this late in a long, long time. I always believe that early to bed and early to rise makes you feel... Well, I guess I'm a little too fast for you fellas. <laughs> excuse me, mister. I like to get the step of my... That's it. Feel better when I'm that way. <laughs> Say, did you fellas ever hear... Did you ever hear that story about the goat that didn't have any nose? Say, there's a funny story. Hello, Spin. Good luck. Huh? Oh, hello, Lim. <laughs> How are you? Fine, this you? is three friends from New York. Oh, right? yeah? yeah? Fine. Gee, you're looking great. I feel what good. are you so happy about? I don't know. Just one of those nights. <laughs> I'll bet you're going down to see your best girl, eh? How'd you guess? Oh, you can't fool me. Wait a minute. I want you to take this with you. And this is for her. Well, here we go again. <laughs> good night, Lamb. Well, good night, Spence. <laughs> Great God. Gee, we're lucky, fellas. You know it's going to start to rain? Just got home in time. <laughs> well, I guess I gotta be going. So long. Hey, what'll I do with this here? Well, put it up against the curb, will you, Kelly? My hand. Be careful of that. That's the boy. <laughs> well, fellas, good night. Sleep tight and pleasant dreams. So long. Starting to rain, Norman. Sue? Can I take you home? Yes. I got some awful good news to tell you. You have? Uh-huh. I've got some good news to tell you. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll get ready and hurry up. Oh, what we need is a boat. <laughs> Wait a minute. I didn't mind the walk a bit. The news you told me about Mr. Diamond made it one of the nicest walks I've ever had. You know, I, I kind of thought you'd like it. <laughs> no, 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 I... I got something special I want to tell you. I've got something special to tell you. Oh, but I got to tell you first on account of... On account of what? On account of because I got to tell you. No, ladies first. That's right. All right. Married. Married? Harry Dale, your best friend. Oh, I'm so happy. My best friend. I wanted to tell you before, but Harry wouldn't let me. I guess it's because he was bashful or something. Yeah. Well, I gotta be going. Good night. Good 
Good luck. Norma. I'm the happiest guy in the world. See who my girl is? It's Norma Baker. And you helped me win her, you old son of a gun. Well, you're all wet. Yeah, I kind of... kind of got caught without my umbrella. Well, you remember our promise? Now you know who my girl is. Who's your girl? Why, I... I haven't got any girl. I was fooling you. I was fooling everybody. Yeah, I guess I hate all that. I better be getting home and changing my clothes. Yeah, you better. You might catch cold. Good night. Well, I'll never be able to get rid of all this right. I feel like a pudding. <laughs> well, I guess I gotta be going. Well, thanks, Spence, for being a very good best man. Uh, We're sure gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you, too. Well, goodbye, Harry. Goodbye, Spence. Goodbye, Norma. You'll write to us often, won't you? You bet I'll write. Sure, we'll send you a postal card. Well, send me one from Buffalo. I've got two from Niagara Falls already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear the turtle doves. <laughs> and they are slow. Oh, my dear, you were such a lovely bride. Oh, and such a handsome groom. <laughs> Ten o'clock, Spencer. Yes, I guess it is. Well, I gotta get back on the job. Goodbye. 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 Good luck. Hey, there's that elevator mug. There is a Santa Claus. Hey, smart guy. Any advice to give before I knock you for a loop? down there, I wouldn't help him. I wouldn't even help his grandmother.
Huh, Buster? If you take a fool's advice... You 